So I invite you to turn to 2 Corinthians. We've um, gone through it, and uh, when we come to the second segment, we want to help to focus our time and see what God's saying to us as a church today, and we focus on the word compelled, compelled and convinced. And as we heard through the um, communion, the movement of this passage is verse 10, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may be rep recompensed for his deeds in the body, according to what he has done, whether good or bad. So there's going to be a day when we show up before God. It may be today, if we pass away today, it may be years from now, when we are 80 or whatever. But there's going to be a day when we must answer for our life. What is your life about? What was your life for? And so verse 11 is where he comes in and says, Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we persuade men. If we know that I'm going to show up before God and, and answer for my life, then I must persuade the lost. And then today we talked about why. Verse 14, for the love of Christ controls us. Having concluded this, that one died for all, therefore all died. And he died for all so that they might live, might no longer live for themselves, but for him who died and rose again on their behalf. I, I do this, I persuade men not because of me, but because his love moves me, and I don't, I don't live for me anymore. I live for him. Because his love changes me. And then we talked about the change in Christ, that we are a new creation. There's a new relationship with Christ. And we see people in our world no longer in, spirit, in physical eyes, but spiritual eyes. That, they, that we see not according to the flesh any longer, but we see our friends and family not just living this life, but they are dead in their sin. They need the gospel. And so I don't live in that relationship just a friend anymore or just a student or just a, a family member. I see them in need of, of Christ in their life. And so that's why he gave us a ministry. And I want us to focus on this as we come into the Romans passage today in verse 20. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ as though God were making an appeal through us. We beg you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. And we hear a lot here, but just look at the words that Paul uses. Ambassadors for Christ. Ambassadors, one that's sent out representing him. And they go into a, a hostile nation, a different nation, to represent them. And it's like we are making an appeal. Appeal like I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm trying to appeal to your, your, what, what your need is of God. And not just that, but God we're making an appeal. God is appealing to the lost through you. And we beg you on behalf of Christ. So God's appealing through us. Christ is begging, which is very hard for us to see, but we beg you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. God has made the way through Jesus Christ, for he became sin to take on our sin so that we can take on his righteousness on us. So as we think about today, we think about compelled. We say, compelled to do what? Compelled to persuade, compelled to appeal, compelled to beg our friends and family because we see you with spiritual eyes. And as we, if we look at through it that way, many of us are not going. Many of us don't beg, don't appeal. We're very silent. We're very passive because Christ's love has not compelled us. So have that in your mind because it's not just, oh, if I don't do it, then I don't do it. Because guess what? One day you will answer for your life on the judgment day where God says, what have you done with what I gave you? What, will it, what have you done with the love that I've shown you on the cross? Have you dug a hole and put it in the ground or have you appealed and begged, persuaded all the people around you, be reconciled to God? And you only can do that if you love people. That's what we'll learn today in Romans, so I invite you to turn to Romans 13 as we go on today and hear that it must be love. 
And as we think about the service today, it's not just what he's teaching us in 2 Corinthians, what he's teaching us in Romans are separate. They're all together. There's one message that he's putting on our heart, and we want to hear what he's saying. So let us stand and read together. So Romans 13. We'll read from 8 on to the end of the section. Owe nothing to anyone except to love one another. For he who loves his neighbor has fulfilled the law. For this, you should not commit adultery, you should not murder, you should not steal, you should not covet. And if there's any other commandment, it is summed up in this saying, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no, does no wrong to a neighbor, Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. Do this, knowing the time, that it is already the hour for you to awaken from sleep. For now, salvation is nearer to us than we, when we believe. The night is almost gone, and the day is near. Therefore, let us lay aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us behave properly as in the day, not in carousing and drunkenness, not in sexual promiscuity and sensuality, not in strife and jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh in regards to its lusts. Praise God for his word. You may be seated. Let us come to the Lord and ask him to help us to enter into his word in, in a way that is pleasing to him, that also help us to feel the leading of the Holy Spirit, the conviction of the Holy Spirit, and the joy of being in, in debt of grace and in debt of love and being able uh, in a position that uh, Christ sent us forward to live it out for him and to live it out for the world. But we rejoice in you for your truth. We rejoice that you continue to reveal your truth to us and compel our heart to respond to your truth so that we can live for you and live in the fullness of the grace and mercy you have given to us. And in the fullness of the great commission that you have given to us to, and the purpose of the kingdom that you want to accomplish in us and through us. So as we listen to your word this morning, right here, right now, change us, Lord. Compel us to live for you in a new way, with a new joy, with a new commitment, and a new dedication to you because of your truth. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, as we heard uh, uh, the, the text in Roman, we were actually uh, in verse 8 for, for, for last week, and, and uh, we were able to cover only the first part, owe nothing to anyone except to love one another. And we will reconnect to, uh, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to the flow of... Uh, uh, of the uh, of, of the section, but we are talking about the essence of Christian obligation to the world, and here we we are uh, uh, just uh, uh, brought into the understanding that love is the key. That we are in the debt of love uh, to God, in the debt of love to 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 the church, in the debt of love to the world. And, and, and now we are uh, brought into the understanding that as we live it out, we actually live out in the, the obedience of the law uh, of God because love, as Paul said twice in, in the passage, is the fulfillment of the whole law. And so we, we, we come to the deeper understanding now and, and the deeper conviction as we go uh, in here. But uh, let me just uh, walk you through a quick, re quick, re quick review of uh, what it means that that we are in the debt of love and how we live it out uh, in this truth. So, so as, uh, as Paul is uh, transitioning from paying taxes uh, to the government from verse uh, as, uh, 6 and 7 uh, to paying all debts uh, to, 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 to people, but the real destination is for him to get to the, uh, the passage that we are facing today and that is the perpetual debt of love that each and every one of us have because of our salvation, because of the grace that we have received. So he wants to focus on that, owe nothing to anyone except to love one another. 
and, and, and so we, we, we started out with, uh, with point number one in the essence uh, of Christian obligation to others. Number one, we pay our debt. It's, 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 it's very simple that uh, in, in the physical uh, world uh, as well as the spiritual world, uh, in, in all the, the, uh, the relationship that we have, this, uh, this is uh, the, 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 the principle that uh, compels us as well, that uh, we pay our debts that we should pay our financial obligations. And, and Paul is, is, is not for, for uh, prohibit the debt in terms of, 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 uh, uh, of the obligation that we have with others, uh, but uh, he prohibits uh, having unpaid debt or, 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 or outstanding debt. Uh, so, so, so it is uh, not the indebtedness that was prohibited, but it is uh, the non-payment that is prohibited and that is not acceptable to the Lord. So, so if we are in debt, uh, we ought to uh, plan to pay uh, that off and then pay that out. Uh, as we are reminded that uh, if we are in a position to make loans, uh, we don't take advantage of people with uh, charging them uh, uh, high interest. Uh, we charge interest uh, uh, only when the loan is discretionary, meaning for work, business, or investment. When it comes to needs, uh, we are instructed that uh, loan uh, uh, is without interest. But when we borrow, uh, when we have debt, uh, uh, with interest or without, uh, we pay it back. Uh, we never borrow without the commitment to pay back and trust in the Lord that he will help us to live that out. And so we have to be uh, uh, very careful and very restricted in how we borrow. Uh, uh, because, like we said, the, 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 the Bible is not forbidding the indebtedness, but it is forbidding the non-payment. And there's a, a distinction that we, we pointed out last time, that, uh, that, uh, that Scripture said that the wicked borrow and do not repay. And that's the, the, the characteristic uh, of, uh, of those who don't belong, to, don't belong to God, but the righteous give generously. And also the Bible warns us against the danger of debt, saying that uh, the borrower becomes the lender's slave. So we have to understand the obligation of debts uh, and the, uh, uh, the, the, the compulsion and the control that it has on us. But, but that's also on the, on, on the positive sense, uh, Paul is moving forward with that understanding that we are under obligation, that, that we don't live our life freely just for ourselves. And so he said, owe nothing to anyone except to love one another. So he, he, he moved us to the second point on our outline, that is, uh, love is our debt to all. Love is our debt to all. <coughs> and, uh, and, 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 and the reason we, uh, we, uh, we live in the debtedness uh, of love is that because we have received fully uh, the, the, the outflowing of God's love into our heart. Uh, even when we were sinner, so this is the foundation of love and mercy that he has established uh, in uh, in the book of Romans from chapter one to uh, to chapter eleven. Uh, established the foundation of love and mercies uh, that uh, given to us freely by the uh, redemption in Christ, justification in Christ, sanctification in Christ, glorification in Christ, with eternal security. And the reason we uh, always come back to this foundation is that uh, uh, we have to understand that loving others must always be from this foundation and from the fact that we have experienced God's love in Jesus Christ and that we have uh, eternal and secure and guaranteed love and grace and mercy in the Lord. Uh, and nothing can separate us from, from, from His love anywhere, anyhow. Because when we try to love uh, others, when we have not experienced the love of Christ, uh, we are just into moralism. We are just into uh, you know, doing works uh, and effort, and that doesn't accomplish anything, and it does not get us anywhere. But it's only after that we have come across uh, 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 to the cross as sinners uh, and receive God's gift of eternal life and, and eternal love uh, in Christ, uh, as, as Paul, Paul said in, uh, in Romans chapter 5, uh, verse 5, he said, God has poured out his love into our heart by the Holy Spirit whom he has given to us. That when we enter uh, into the relationship with God, we receive love overwhelmingly. He has poured out his love into our heart, and that is how we can love. 
So, so, so love is, uh, is, is, is our debt and our debt to all, as Paul said, ex uh, owe nothing to anyone except to love one another. Uh, and then he expanded that out to say that for he who loves his neighbor has fulfilled the law. And, and so the, the, the debt of love we have is, uh, first of all, to the church, to, to, to the believers in the church, because he said uh, to love one another. Uh, we have a debt to love one another. Uh, so, so we have a debt of love to the church that we must pay. And, and, and again, we, we, we learn this. I just want to, to, to remind us that, uh, that uh, you know, the, the, the church is not just uh, a place we attend in, uh, for, uh, for uh, you know, in, 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 in Sunday morning uh, for worship services together, but it's a family and it's a body of Christ and, and it is the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the extension of Christ, the, the fullness of Christ uh, that is in the world, that Christ is working his, uh, his plan and his purpose in the church and through the church. And it is uh, in that uh, togetherness and in obligation that we have with one another, Paul said, and scripture said that we owe one another the debt of love. And then to everyone, and, and he extended that out to, to, to say that, uh, that he who loves the other, uh, translates his neighbor, uh, to point out that we are also have the obligation of love uh, to, to, uh, to all people uh, 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 be, 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 be because we are the channels uh, to, to bring God's love to them. And, 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 that is, uh, and that is the conviction that we must have as, as we ask the question, how do we incur this debt of love? Uh, how, 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 how did we become uh, obligated uh, and, 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 it is be, and it is because uh, we have been given love to, to give to others. It, it's just like uh, the, the way that Paul uh, showed us uh, that he is under obligation to preach the gospel. Uh, so, so, so he said, I am obligated to both the Greeks and the Jews, uh, both the wise and the foolish. And, and I am to preach the gospel to, uh, to, uh, to, to, to all of them. And he said, uh, I am a debtor, I am under obligation. And he, and he pointed out the reason why is that he said, because I have received grace and I have been sent. And, and, and so, uh, so, 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 so Paul said that uh, all of us, and, and he in his case, uh, have become debtor because uh, we have received grace and we have been sent to, to, to carry that grace or to channel that grace uh, to others. We have not received it for our own self alone, uh, but uh, we have received it uh, for, the, for the benefit of others. And so, and so th that is how we, uh, we, we have to develop this deep sense of indebtedness uh, and the obligation that, uh, that because we have received freely what God has given to us in grace and, and mercy and in love uh, and, and also we have received freely so that we can freely give uh, and, 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 and uh, on that there's uh, a, a, a great stu uh, the great stewardship that given to us that's, that's what, uh, what uh, Paul also mentioned in 1 Corinthians 9 chapter, uh, chapter 9 verse 16, 17 he said I have been entrusted with a stewardship the stewardship of the gospel, the stewardship of love. And we have been also uh, entrusted with that stewardship of love when we receive love from, uh, at the cross of Christ. Uh, when, when God has poured out his love into our heart by the Holy Spirit whom he has given to us and has uh, demonstrated his love when we were yet sinner, he loved us. And, and, and he said again, freely you have received, freely give. And he, and he said, uh, we love because he first loved us. Uh, we, we have come to the point of, uh, uh, of indebtedness uh, to the church uh, to, to uh, share the love that we have in Christ and, and, and to be transformed together uh, in maturity in the love of Christ. But we also have the, 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 the debt of love that we must share. Uh, bring to others uh, because we are compelled by God's love and Christ's love to the world because he wants us uh, to give to the world. It's just like in an example we, we gave before, somebody gives you some money to give to somebody else. 
you are, as you receive the money, you are indebted to that somebody else that uh, uh, that's, uh, that have to be on, on the receiving end uh, 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 this re the receiving end of the gift. And so God has given to us uh, the, 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 the love of Christ, but also given us the message of Christ so that we can share to the world and we are under obligation to do so. Now, before we, we, we move on to, uh, to, to, to the point today, I want to point out uh, just how are we going to pay back the debt of love. Because we, we can say that I don't have the whole, uh, whole lot of love to pay back. Uh, the, the good news is that uh, we don't have to pay back our, 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 our own meager uh, store of love or, or you know, the limited uh, capacity of our heart. We pay it out of the limitless overflow of God's love to, uh, to us uh, in the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's why we, we emphasize at the start that we must have uh, the experience of God's love before we can love others and before we can pay, off, uh, pay our debt. Uh, so life is easy when I'm a debtor, but I pay my debt with my father's uh, resources. And so we pay our debt of love with the riches of Christ. And this is what Paul's uh, instruction uh, on paying our debt of, of love. Actually, it is the prayer uh, for the church uh, to discover the way to be rich in love uh, and, and uh, to, 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 to connect to the overwhelming resources uh, from Christ so that we can love and take care of all the debt that we may have. And that, that would be a prayer that, uh, that we will come across uh, quite a bit uh, in, 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 in this season of time. I want us to turn it there so that we can just uh, have a notion of that and then we'll come back to that as well. And that is in Ephesians chapter 3. <coughs> Ephesians chapter 3 verse 14 to 19. Let me just uh, let me just uh, just just uh, uh, bring it uh, forth uh, here. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom His whole family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that uh, out of His glorious riches, He may strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of Christ. I mean, you, you're almost uh, tempted to read again and again because it's, it's, uh, it's so deep and so rich. Uh, but I, I'll, I'll just uh, uh, kind of bring out uh, some main thought units here. Number one is that uh, we, we, we into this process uh, with the Holy Spirit strength, uh, strengthening uh, us in our inner being. Verse 16, he said, I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with the power with, uh, through the, his spirit in your inner being. So how do we discover love and how do we get uh, uh, overwhelmed and compelled by love and, 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 and receive the unlimited uh, resources of love from the Lord? Uh, number one, we tend to our inner man. You tend to your inner man. You focus on spiritual things. You keep your heart sensitive to God. And the Holy Spirit will strengthen you in the inner man on the spiritual things. And, and, and that's, uh, the, that is the, 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 the start of the process. That you focus on the spiritual things. You keep your heart sensitive to God. And the Holy Spirit will give us understanding of scriptures and lead you to know Christ more deeply. And so he does so with abundance. He said that out of his glorious riches, so you become rich inside, and the inner man, uh, 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 the, 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 the person that is, uh, that is inside, uh, will prosper as we have more truth from God's word and more obedience to God. So, so it starts out with the work of the Holy Spirit uh, in your inner being. To the point uh, that Christ rule in your heart. Uh, so he said in verse 17, so that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith. And not that we don't have Christ, but, 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 the, but the picture here is that Christ is comfortable in your heart, that he is the master there, that, uh, that you submit to the Lordship of Christ in your heart, that, uh, that Christ rules in your heart in, in, in terms that, uh, that, uh, that, that, that you submit totally and completely 
to the Lordship of Christ. So you live by faith, you don't walk by sight, and you make every decision, and you live uh, every day by faith in Christ and under His instruction and for His glory. And that's also also the, 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 the process of yielding to the control of the Holy Spirit, yielding to the love and grace of Christ. And then that will get you to the point where you become rich in Christ's love together with the church. So he said, I pray that being rooted and established in love, you may have power together with all the saints. So it is not an independent, pro, you know, independent project uh, or, or individual process. But uh, as you tend to your inner man, as uh, you yield to the Lordship of Christ, uh, in the process, in connection with the church and with, uh, with, uh, with the saints, you become mature in the love of Christ, being rooted and established in love. And you grow together with others in the church, uh, in the love of Christ, together with all the saints, to the point where you can grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And that's, that's it's, uh, it's, uh, so instructive that a lot of times, you know, we long to know uh, Christ's love, but we don't connect to the church. We don't work through the process with the church. We, we don't uh, in fellowship with, 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 with others here. And he said, together with the sin is how you grasp how wide and long and high and deep the love of Christ. And so, as, and, and, and when we get here, we can say that uh, that as you pay the debt of love to the saints uh, in the church, we're others in the church, and, and others in the church also pay the debt of love to one another, each one of us get more and more uh, in, in our experience of love in the, uh, in the life that we live uh, in love, and so we have more in our resources to pay back to one another uh, in love and to others in the world in love. And so the, so the, the, the church grow deeper in love to the point that you know this love that surpasses knowledge. And so everyone is uh, deeper and richer in Christ's love to the fullest, so that you may be filled to the measure of all fullness of God. So that's, that's, that's a wonderful process that we understand that as we tend to the inner being, yield to the Holy Spirit, live by faith under the Lordship of Christ, uh, uh, in connection to the church together with, uh, with living it out in love, uh, uh, in the context of, uh, of the church. That's how you get resources from Christ uh, to pay back the debt of love. Again, you yield to the guidance of the Holy Spirit through the Word. You yield to the Lordship of Christ in your heart and you practice with the saints in the church uh, in living out in love to, 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 to one another uh, and you discover that you have more love, more abundant, uh, abundant love to cover all our obligations, all our debtedness of love. And so we can uh, continue to pay up in more love. And, uh, and, and, and that is uh, what Paul is uh, guiding us in, in verse 8. And now we move forward. That is, owe nothing to anyone except to love one another that is in the church. For he who loves his neighbor, that is, he, he loves uh, people in the world, has fulfilled the law. And then in verse uh, 9, 10, he continued to the explanation for this. You shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet. And if there is any other commandment, it is summed up in this saying, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. So now we, 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 we are moving in a, in a uh, a deeper direction uh, to this uh, understanding that love is our obedience to the law. So we come now to the central point of this section uh, of uh, Romans 13, verse 8 to, uh, to 10, uh, with a summary statement, love is our obedience to the law. Now Paul has uh, built up his, uh, his uh, teaching and his presentation of the Christian life in response to God's grace. And he does so very thoroughly and very uh, solidly uh, to bring us to this high point. And here at the peak, he declares that the, the response of the Christians to the mercies of God is love. It is to love God and to love man. And he points out the significance of this truth, that life of love is the fulfillment of all God's law. Now, I don't want us to lose this one, so let me, let me just repeat what I just said. That Paul is bringing us to this high point 
uh, to declare that the response of, of us Christians to the mercies of God is love. And he points out that it's so significant because that life of love is the fulfillment of all God's law. It is the evidence of true faith and transformation. So love, as we will define and explain, is the fulfillment of the, of the law. And Paul said that twice in verse 8. He who loves his neighbor has fulfilled the law. And then in verse 10, therefore love is the fulfillment of the law. So for this point number three, uh, love is our obedience to the law. I actually use the, 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 the word obedience to the law instead of the fulfillment of the law just to emphasize the process and that is obedience is what you do and the result is the fulfillment uh, is what you achieve. But it's essentially the same thing uh, as uh, Paul intended uh, and, and we will see. But uh, as we launch into this important doctrine uh, of, of love, let's, uh, let me just give you a working definition of love so that we, we are on the same page. So we would de define love this way. Love is the selfless commitment to the highest good of the one you love. So love is the selfless commitment to the highest good of the one you love. So to love God is to, to, to totally commit to his glory because that is the essence of who God is. And by definition, it is the highest good. Uh, so to love God is to totally commit to, uh, to, uh, to totally commit to His glory, uh, because it is the highest uh, uh, good uh, that He has uh, revealed to us about, about Himself and also concerning us as uh, the recipient of, of, of relationship to Him. And to love others is to commit selflessly to their highest good. Now, not necessarily what they want or what feels good or comfortable to them or to us, but it is to commit uh, to, to bring God, God's best for them. So to love others is to commit selflessly to their highest good. So love has, has been the, uh, the, 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 the undercurrent in, in the chapter 12 moving forward that we have uh, uh, been studying uh, you know, for the last uh, few months. Uh, not a few months, but actually, we, I think we, we, we spent about a year in chapter 12. Uh, so Paul turned from laying the, the foundation in chapter 1 to chapter 11 to challenging uh, uh, us as, as uh, believers in the body of Christ to action based on the truth that, uh, that uh, he has been teaching. And so Romans 12, 1 to 2 is... is uh, is the uh, response of love that we have to, uh, uh, to, to, to the mercy and grace of God. That our gratitude for the grace of God in our salvation, uh, we should uh, present our body as a living sacrifice in worshipful service. That, uh, that we have uh, 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 the, the, the great calling uh, that uh, by the mercies uh, of God to present our bodies and live in holy, as uh, a living holy sacrifice acceptable to God which is our spiritual service of, 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 of worship. Uh, and, 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 and the obligation here is, 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 is captured by, uh, by, by, by Scripture as you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your, <coughs> with all your soul, with all your mind. And that is in Deuteronomy chapter 6 uh, verse 5 and also in Matthew 22 verse 27. And what is so marvelous is that uh, as, uh, as Jesus uh, was, was teaching about the, the, the obligation and, and the highest uh, calling for us, he pulled together the flow of the Old Testament and also the New Testament teaching and make love in God the central theme of the whole Bible, the whole revelation. He said that this is the first and greatest commandment and that is we shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, <laughs> and 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 so and so this this, this had been uh, is 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 not new, uh, but somehow it's uh, it's uh, it can be forgotten, and so here the Lord uh, has renewed it and made it central for us, and then and then uh, as we see also in 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 the verses that follow. Uh, uh, from, uh, 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 from, from verse two, uh, 1 to 2 in chapter 12. Uh, so from 3 to 21, uh, Paul articulated and applied the second great theme of the Bible, and that is our obligation to love uh, God by loving others. 
and, and, and the Old Testament once again uh, is, is also confirmed by the New and this obligation is you shall love your neighbor as yourself and that's stated in Leviticus uh, 19 uh, verse 18 and also re uh, uh, re re repeated by Christ in Matthew 22 39 and we see also in verse 9 for us uh, that, that, we, <laughs> that we just read in, uh, in, uh, in Romans 13 that you shall love your neighbors as yourself. So, so loving others is 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 a, is is a, is, a, is a theme that we are uh, we are looking at. Uh, uh, so, from uh, from verse uh, three to eight in, in in chapter twelve, he said, "We love the church. Uh, that uh, that love must inspire and govern our ministry to one another with." Uh, with the body of Christ as we exercise our spiritual gift. And then in verse uh, 9 to 21 of chapter 12, he showed that love has to govern our relationship with, uh, with, uh, with everybody, with our neighbors, even with our ne enemies, uh, that, uh, that, uh, uh, that, we, uh, that we show love uh, 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 even to those who are hostile to us. And in, in, in Roman uh, uh, 13 to 1 to 7, when he explained uh, and about our relationship with, 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 with the government, he's pointing out that, uh, that we can uh, have that relationship out of fear. Uh, <coughs> but, but he said it has to be, uh, but that is kind of a, 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 a low road. So he wants us to, to walk on the high road, and that is what he said in verse, uh, in verse 5. Therefore, it is necessary to be in subjection, not only because of wrath, but also, also for conscience sake, uh, uh, for, for the conviction of, of, of what we know of God and, and of ourselves. So he's moving in that direction, and, and he's, uh, he's opening up the, uh, the, 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 the obligation of love for one another and for, for all that is in, <laughs> that is in the world. And, 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 and later on, we will move into chapter uh, 14 and 6, uh, uh, other way to chapter 16. And Paul is talking about uh, how we live in love with, uh, with, 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 with our brothers and sisters uh, in the church and, and also how we show love in, uh, in, in the world. Uh, so when we live uh, with that sensitivity to, uh, to the brothers uh, in, in, in Christ, in uh, chapter 14, verse 15, for example, he said, For if because of food your brother is hurt, you are no longer walking according to love. So love is, is, the, is the controlling factor that, uh, that, uh, uh, that moves us forward in all our, all our relationship. But here Paul is, uh, in, in particular, he wants to move us to the understanding that, uh, that love is uh, our, obedience to, uh, our obedience to the law. Uh, uh, for he who loves his neighbor has fulfilled the law. And then uh, in verse 10 again, love is the fulfillment of, of the law. So we begin with the relationship to the law. Uh, and we ask the question, uh, as uh, Paul to bring us uh, in that connection to the law, he who loves his neighbor has fulfilled the law. What is the obligation that Christians have with the law? What is the relationship to the law? And, and, and so uh, a lot of us would understand that uh, we are saved by grace, uh, we are saved into grace, and we stand on grace, uh, in grace, as Romans 5 said, this grace uh, in which we stand, and we are no longer under the law, we are, under, we are no longer under the obligation to, uh, to, to, uh, to, to, to the law, we are no longer bound uh, to the law. Uh, so what is uh, the Christian relationship to the law? Are we still bound to the law? Are we still have to, to fulfill the law? And the answer is that it's true in one sense and not true in the other. Uh, in the one sense, we are not bound to the law. In another sense, we are still bound to the law. We are not bound to the law as to its power. Uh, in, 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 in other words, uh, we, we are saying that the law, after we have been uh, saved and, re and, re and redeemed, has no power to condemn us. Uh, we are not bound to the law, number two, as to its penalty. The law has no power to, to, uh, to exercise penalty on us anymore, to kill us or to exercise uh, uh, wrath on us. 
but we are still bound by the law as to its precepts, as to its truth, as to its command. For God has not changed his morality, not his changed who he is. He has not abandoned his standard of truth. And so with, with, with this understanding, uh, and, and we will understand that, uh, that, uh, that we are bound to the law, but we have already satisfied the, the requirements of the law by the righteousness of Christ. Uh, and that is uh, that's, it's essential to understand uh, uh, what, what Paul is going uh, 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 is, is, is bringing us forward. So let's turn back to uh, to Roman eight and, and hear the uh, hear the explanation of our relationship to uh, to uh, to uh, to God's law, uh, verse uh, one to four, chapter eight. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin of, and, and of death. For what the law could not do, weak as it was through the flesh, God did, sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh as an offering for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh so that the requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the spirit. So verse 1 is very clear. There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So the law has no power over us. Uh, the law cannot execute uh, uh, penalty over us anymore. Verse 2. Through Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit of life has set me free from the law of sin and death. And that is, we have been set free from the law's uh, ability to cause us to be guilty of sin unto death. So the law cannot condemn us as guilty of sin anymore. And the law can no longer demand the just penalty of death that is uh, for all those who break in God's law. So, so, so we are uh, not bound to the law in the sense of its power. We are not bound to the law in the sense of its penalty. And, and verse 3 uh, explain uh, what happened uh, at the justification. The law cannot save, it has no power to save, verse 3 said, for what the, the law has powerless to do, in that it was weakened by the sinful nature. But God provided the solution for sin by the atonement work of Christ, and the penalty of sin was carried out at the cross. And so he said, uh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful man to be sin offering, and so he condemned sin in sinful man. So in, in, in other words, because of the sacrifice of, of Christ, uh, the law can no longer uh, penalize us, no longer kill us, because Christ already died in our place. But in verse 4, when we were redeemed, even though we are no longer under law's, uh, under law's power and penalty, the purpose of redemption is made very, very clear here. Verse 4, in order that the righteous requirements of the law may be fully met in us who do not live according to the sinful nature but according to the spirit. So as we walk in the spirit we are now have the capacity and the ability to fulfill the law. Uh, so we are free from the law only in the sense of its power to dominate us and condemn us uh, in terms of its penalty to set, to sentence us to uh, as viol as violator of the law, uh, but we are not free from the law as to like we said from its truth, from its precepts. We are still commanded and called to a life of obedience to the revealed word of God. So we are to keep the law. Uh, so obviously the question comes: How can we keep the law? Uh, uh, well. Uh, well, first, in terms of God, how God looks at the requirements of the law for us, uh, we have fulfilled the law in Christ. We have met and satisfied the requirements of law, the law by the righteousness of Christ, given to us by faith through grace. That's what he said. God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful man to be a sin offering in order that the righteous requirements of the law may be fully met in us. So as far as God is concerned, we satisfy the law. We, made the, uh, we met the requirements of the law, uh, the righteous requirements of the law already fully met in us because of the sin offering of the Lord Jesus Christ. So the result of God's justification and the requirements of the law fulfilled in us, then what happened? 
then we do not live according to the sinful nature, but according to the spirit. So we live out the, the reality of the law that is in us. We begin to obey the law, uh, not perfectly, but more and more. And we now have the ability to, uh, to obey the law through Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit of life has set me free from the law of sin and death. We have the power and the enablement of the Holy Spirit to obey the law. Uh, so, so, so now we love God's law and we want to obey God's law. So, so, so that's the picture. We are set free from the law, from the penalty of the law, for the demand, uh, 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 for, the, for the requirements of the law. And we have satisfied the law. We have met the requirements of the law by, by the righteousness of Christ that is given to us by God's justification. But then we love the law and we live our life in, in obedience of the law and in fulfillment of the law. And, and, and just, a, just a, a, a reminder that, uh, that we don't do so perfectly in, 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 in our life on earth and, and we all understand that. Uh, we still have the, the, fresh, the, the flesh remaining in us. We still live in this uh, dying body uh, with tendencies and habits of sin. Uh, we are still in the presence of sin and we're still in the, uh, uh, under the influence of sin. And therefore we are, we are all in the battle uh, 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 against sin uh, for, for each and every one of us. So in the inner man we delight in the law of God but we have another law warring uh, in our members, as Paul said in, in chapter 7, he spent the whole chapter explaining to us uh, the, the struggle that we have. And so we have this principle of sin in, in, uh, in our humanness warring against uh, uh, us uh, for the heart of, uh, of obedience. Uh, and, and each one of us fight the battle. But the hopeful part is that the longer we fight the battle, the more victorious we will, begin, uh, we will, we will be. Uh, be, be, uh, because uh, we have the resources for victory. And, and, and what the key for us to understand here is, uh, as we go back to, 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 to chapter uh, 13, and that is uh, love is the key of fulfillment of the law. Love is the key on how we would fulfill the law, uh, not, not to satisfy the, the requirements of the law, that's already done, but, but in terms of, of living it out in our life, and, and, and Paul said, uh, Owe nothing to anyone except to love one another. Verse 8, For he who loves his neighbor has fulfilled the law. So love is the key to, uh, to, obedience, uh, 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 to, to obedience of the law. And again, it is uh, to, love, uh, uh, to, to love all people, especially uh, the, the first to... To the believers, to the believers in the church, and then to everyone in the world. Uh, so, so Paul, Paul now move forward and and and, uh, and explain to us uh, how love can be the fulfillment of the law, and it and it is it is important for us uh, to understand this because, like we said, we already satisfied the the demand of uh, uh, of, uh, of of God's law. We already satisfied the penalty of God's law. But now we, we, we need to live out the, the essence of, of God's law in terms of our experience, in, in, in terms of reality in, 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 in our life. What Christ already accomplished at the cross is, uh, is our position before God. God has accepted us in the perfection of Christ, in the righteousness of Christ. But now we live out that reality in our life and that is through love and, 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 and through love. Uh, uh, the, the, through the love that God has given to us to give to all. So, 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 so again, uh, uh, love and law are not, uh, uh, not, uh, in, 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 not in opposition, uh, not, uh, uh, not contradictory, but uh, it's, uh, it's all together. Love is the fulfilling of, of the law. And so, uh, uh, in fact, we, uh, we, we can summarize all Ten Commandments into two, sta uh, two statements. Love the Lord with all your God, with all your heart, with all your mind, and so, and, and so and strength, and love the neighbor as yourself. Let, let's turn to uh, Matthew 20, uh, 20, uh, chapter 22 and verse 36 to 30, uh, just to hear this statement. 
as uh, as uh, somebody uh, 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 bring the question to to the Lord Jesus, uh, teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Uh, verse thirty seven. Jesus reply, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. So in those two commandments, you have all the law and the prophets to, uh, all together, and this is the point that Paul is making. So as Christian, we ask, how can I fulfill the law of God? How can I keep all God's law? The answer is love. Love is the fulfillment of the law. And so right, right into the Galatians, uh, Paul talked uh, about Christian being free. Uh, from all the requirements of, of the law by justification. Uh, but, uh, but we are free not to live uh, our lives uh, to our own desire, but to return to the law to fulfill it to love. Uh, let's turn to Galatians chapter 5, verse 13 to 14. Galatians 5, 13, 14. He said, You, my brothers, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the sinful nature Rather, serve one another in love. The entire law is summed up in this single command, love your neighbors as yourself. So, so we, we are free by, by, uh, by justification uh, from the law. Uh, the righteousness of Christ cover all the requirements of the law for us. Uh, but we are to return to the law and, and to fulfill the law by uh, loving one another because it is uh, so the entire law is summed up in this one single command, love your neighbor as yourself. So, so the essence of the law is love. And that is such an important and central understanding uh, that, uh, that uh, James in, in uh, James 2 uh, verse 8, he, he called love the royal command, the royal law. Now royal means majestic, uh, kingly, uh, noble, central, uh, so, so, so uh, James said, you fulfill this royal law, you fulfill the whole law. If you really keep the royal law found in scripture, love your neighbor as yourself, you are doing right. So, 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 th so this is the, 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 the central focus uh, of, of the law, and that is love. So, so if we look uh, more fully in, in verse 9 of, uh, of Romans chapter 13 that we are at, uh, for this uh, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not co 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 covet. Uh, Paul is focusing on showing how love is, is, is the key to fulfill the law uh, in regard to all the relationship we have with, 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 with one another with the church as well as with the world. And, 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 and he, has, he concentrated on the second part of the Ten Commandments, uh, dealing with the relationship with, uh, with people. And so he lists four of the Ten Commandments. Uh, he, he listed the seventh, the sixth, the eighth, and the ten in that order. And then he leaves out uh, uh, number f uh, five and number, f f f and, and, and number nine. And as far as we, we, we can tell, there's no significance in the order and, uh, on what he picks. He just uh, uh, selecting them as sample of the Ten Commandments and then say if there's any other commandments, so he, he cover all the rest. Uh, and so he, he just taken four to represent the Ten Commandments. Uh, and, and as you know, the Ten Commandments can be grouped into uh, two parts. The first four is about God, uh, the love of God, and the uh, the remaining six are about love, uh, of, uh, love for others. So Paul select four out of the group two because he's talking about you know the love for others, uh, loving your neighbor and uh, and others in, in in life. And he said the law is summed up in this statement: you will love your neighbor as yourself. And 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 as as as, as, as we can see here, the way that Paul uh, uses this commandment is to illustrate. That, uh, that it is love in action. We can see how love in the substance and the manner of fulfilling the demands of the law. So just take uh, the four sample commandments that Paul selected and it's really simple to see how love is the fulfillment of the law and the essence uh, of, uh, of, of, of what God's law is, is all about. 
So he said, uh, you shall not commit adultery. Well, if you truly love your spouse, and uh, you're clearly not going to commit adultery against him or her, uh, that's certainly not uh, selfless on your part and not the commitment to the highest good uh, of, uh, of your spouse. As again, uh, we, 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 we define love as the selfless commitment to the highest good for the one you love. Uh, so to, to love God is to commit uh, totally to his glory and to love others is to commit selflessly to their highest good. <laughs> and so uh, if, if you love your spouse, you certainly uh, are not going to commit uh, adultery against him or her. Uh, that's not selfless and not the commitment to the highest good of your spouse. And also if you, love, if you truly love that third person, you're not going to commit adultery with her, him or her either because that's not selfless on your part and it's not commitment to the highest good for that, of that person. Now you can extend the principle of the commandment to fornication or sexual intimacy outside of the marriage. You know, people say, you know, we go the distance because uh, we just love each other too much. Well, the answer is no, you break this commandment because you love each other too little. Because love does not defile, love does not steal purity, love does not rob holiness, love does not do that, lust does that, and selfishness does that, so you never commit adultery. You never commit fornication because you love too much. You do that because you love too little. You lust too much. And so, as, as Paul pointed point out in, in this, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, the, 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 the commandment you shall not uh, commit adultery, we, we can see clearly that it is the application of love. And then he goes uh, to the next, you shall not murder. Well, not a whole lot to explain here. Right? If you love somebody, you don't want to kill him. Uh, it's just so obvious. So love precludes this command. Uh, and, and I mean, I don't need somebody to remind me not to kill the one I love. So something about murdering somebody that's hard to argue that is for their best, for their good. Uh, so love does not murder. And naturally, love fulfills this command. That you shall not steal. Again, it's a mute point uh, if you love. Uh, it, is, uh, it is not necessary to say you shall not steal, uh, you shall not uh, take what belongs to someone if I love that someone. I will not deprive that person what belongs to him or her. Uh, the, the, the things that he loves and enjoy and find useful, uh, you know, if I love the person, I commit selflessly to protect his eyes good. So instead of stealing from him, love will compel me to give selflessly to do him good. And thou shalt not Covert uh, is again a, 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 a you know a a, 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 a a new point if you love selfishness covets and takes and steals and kills and hurts selfishness commits to self and self alone uh, but uh, you know in the Sermon on the Mount uh, Jesus taught that those attitude that leads to sinful action uh, just as sinful as, uh, the attitude is just as sinful as the action themselves. So anger is forbidden because uh, it leads to murder. Lust is forbidden because it leads to adultery. So uh, coveting here is evil because it leads me to wish uh, that my neighbors would deprive of something that he owns so that I can have it, I can possess it. So love does the very opposite. Love is a sinless, selfless commitment to the highest good uh, of the one that you love. So love wants to give and not take, and love sacrifice self so others can achieve good. So we can say that love is the intent of the law. Love is the principle, the understanding, the essence, the obedience, the intent of the law. So love is how God wants us to fulfill the law. And, 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 and this, is, uh, this is the marvelous truth. The law is love. We already have Jesus' summation uh, the, of the law. Love God, love man. And now we have the explanation of how to fulfill the law and that is love God and love man. So the definition of the law is to love God and love man and the fulfillment of the law is love, love God and love man. Now, I want to go back quickly to, uh, to look at the Ten Commandments uh, and, and in short order we will see that the law is simply the law of love. The Ten Commandments are simply the law of love. 
Now the first four of, of the Ten Commandments relate to God and the second half of, of them relate to, to, to man as, as, we, as we see. But let's, let's turn to Exodus chapter 20. <coughs> so the highest love is the love for God. And love is, uh, is the commitment to the highest good of the one you love. So loving God is then the commitment to his glory and beyond all else because it is the highest good review of God and the highest good given to all. So it start in, in, uh, in verse 3, you shall have no other gods before me. Now that's a, perf uh, that's a, it's a perfect description of love. So love, first of all, is loyal. Uh, love is true, it's not fickle, it's single-minded, it does not have uh, any other gods. So true love to what God will mean that there's no other love than the love for God. And so love is royal, a uh, loyal, and, and if you really love God, you will be committed to God and to God alone. No, one God only. So that's clear, a, you know, a, a description of love. Uh, <laughs> Commandment number two, in verse four, you shall not make yourself an idol in the form of anything in heaven above or the earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or to, to worship them. So secondly, we can say that love is faithful. Uh, here we can say that, uh, that it keeps no substitute. It satisfies itself with no substitute. It's devoted to, uh, to the object of love and it's true and it's pure in its nature. So love is not unfaithful. Love won't satisfy with substitute. Love won't devote uh, uh, to any other object of the affection uh, but the one that, that we love and so here, we don't substitute God by any idols or by any image or, or anything that may uh, misrepresent Him and we are faithful to Him. Uh, commandment number three, uh, verse seven, you shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless uh, who misuses His name. So, so clearly love is reverent Love is respectful, love honors his object and treasure is worth. And so if you love God, you will not curse his name. That's, that's pretty obvious. You will not use his name in vain. You will not be unfaithful to his word. You will not be disloyal to, to, uh, to him and, and follow another deity. Uh, so, so, so again, we can see that, uh, that uh, love is the essence uh, of, the, uh, of the commandments here. Let's, let's look also at, the, at verse 8, at the fourth commandment, and that is remember the Sabbath by keeping it holy. So love sets apart itself in devotion. Love sets apart itself uh, for uncompromising devotion and, 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 and worship. Now we, 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 we can say here that love is holy, meaning separated out. Uh, love recognizes the place of, the place of God. Love set aside uh, itself for devotion and worship. Love treasures God and prioritizes God and seeks God first. So, when we're talking about you know separate out the 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 day for for, for the worship of God, it is not uh, legalism. It's not uh, you know something that we just observe on on the outside. It is the expression of our love for God from the inside. So you say you love God you are going to worship God and you're going to uh, put that uh, as, as top priority and, and you will keep this commandment not because you have to but because you love to and you want to, to give God the full day, uh, the full devotion and, 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 and the full commitment uh, and, and so the, the whole thing is about the love of God and, and, and that is the summation uh, uh, of the law in Deuteronomy chapter four, uh, chapter six, verse four to, to, to six. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's, 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 it's very well known uh, uh, and, 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 and it's, uh, it's good for us to hear again, even in the context of Israel. So here it said, hear O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give to you today are to be upon your heart. So, so if I love God, my, uh, my God, and with all my heart, my soul, and my strength, the, 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 the commandments will be very natural to me. Uh, I would love to do them. I love to obey them. 
Now the, the time when I, when I fail, the time when I fall short, uh, but, uh, but the perfect standard was already accomplished by Jesus Christ on my behalf. Uh, but the reality of, 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 of the law of God is that I love the law of God and in the love that I have for God and for man, I, I can see how it works out in my life and in the practice of, 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 of love. That's why Paul said it is the fulfillment of the, of, 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 of fulfillment of the law. So, so, so uh, the, uh, the 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 second part of the law, when we of the Ten Commandments, when we're talking about the 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 the, the relationship with men, we already covered. Uh, so, so when we say, "Hey, honor your father and your mother," well, clearly, uh, if you love your mother and father, you will honor them, you will care for them, you will obey them. And so we don't need a law to tell us to honor our father and our mother. We would do that naturally because the abundance of love that is in us. And we have the love that is in us now because God has poured that love in us that we didn't have before in our own nature. But now with the new nature, with the transformation of the heart and, and the control of the Holy Spirit and the Lordship of Christ, we can love and we can have the resources in the riches of Christ to love. So you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not give false testimony, you shall not covet. All of that, when we love them for their highest good, love will take care of it. And so Paul summed up uh, all these commands, uh, the, thou shalt not, uh, in, in verse 10. And he said, love does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore love is the is, is uh, fulfillment of the law. Uh, so, so first do no harm, as, as, as we understand that, and the second part is uh, seek the highest good. So, so that fundamental uh, commitment of love is that we, we do no harm, love does no wrong, and positively we seek the highest good uh, for the person that, 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 that we love. So, do you see the point? Uh, love fulfills the whole law. Uh, and, and and so uh, so that's why the conclusion that uh, it is summed up in this saying: you shall not love, you shall love your neighbors yourself. Uh, the whole thing of the law can be understood uh, as one point, and that is love. Now there, there, there's there's uh, more to say about this, but uh, I'm kind of running out of time, so I just uh, want to kind of uh, wrap it up here. In 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 in, in the focus for in the focus for us now 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 the the, the word that that the, that uh, Paul is use, uh, Paul is using in verse eight that uh, he who loves his neighbor has fulfilled the law and also in verse ten love does no wrong to the neighbor therefore love is uh, the fulfillment of the law uh, it's actually the the same word that applied to the Lord Jesus Christ. I uh, just want to point that out because it is not us fulfilling the law. Uh, we, we, we live out the fulfillment that is already done for, on our behalf and we have the resources in Christ to do so. But in Matthew 5 verse uh, 17, Jesus said, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophet. I have, come to, I have not come to abolish them but to fulfill them. And, and that's the same word Paul used in verse 8. And then in the, verse, uh, the word uh, in verse 10, fulfillment, is a noun and it's to mean fullness or, com or, 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 or completion. Uh, so like the, 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 the substance that fills up the bottle, love is a fullness, is the completion of, of the law. And, and the noun is used uh, for Christ as the substance that he passed on to us. It is grace and it is love and it's marvelous uh, as we see the statement in John 1.16. For of his fullness we have all received. <coughs> and grace upon grace. So, so the fulfillment of the law by Christ uh, that, uh, that he has done on our behalf and he has fulfilled uh, it for us and the fullness of that capacity, the, 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 the fullness of that love is also we have received grace upon grace. So all, so all that is all in Christ and, and, and so we, we, we have the capacity in Christ to love, 
and, and, and because we have received uh, the, the love of Christ, uh, we enter into indebtedness uh, to the church. We, are, uh, we, uh, we enter into indebtedness to the world. We also enter into indebtedness of grace uh, to God himself. So let me just uh, invite you to, uh, to, 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 to respond in, in this manner. As we understand that love is our obedience and our fulfillment of the law, uh, and, and the focus is on to love God and love man, and, and that is how we fulfill the law. And fulfill the law is to, to live out the reality that it has already accomplished to us. So we have the capacity and we have the reason and, and as we learned today that we have the, the, the conviction of the truth and we are compelled to live it out. So there's two areas that I want to suggest for us to focus on in, in, in response. Let me just list it out and then I invite you to, uh, to, to, to just turn to the person next to you and pray that through. Number one, <coughs> concerning God. There's so many things and many, many ways to respond to God, but let me just say, let's pray to God that, that we love God with a more worshipful heart, with a more worshipful heart, that we are to love God with all that is within us, our soul, our body, our mind, our strength, to seek His glory as our highest pursuit. And so we pray for greater delight and treasure in God. I pray that, the, that we have the heart that truly loves and worships God. And so first, we, we, we confess our lukewarmness, our superficial worship that we have before Him, and our, our small and, and a little heart of love for, for, for Him. And I don't want us to focus on the things that we can do, like, you know, be more on time and be more focused and be more intentional, those things will come. But focus on being convinced and convicted by the greatness of His person, and then love Him. Pray for the greater love for God in our heart and that expressed in the worshipful heart for Him. So number one, pray for love for God so that we can worship Him with a full heart of love and devotion. Number two, we want to focus on paying the debt of love out of the riches of, uh, of the love of Christ. We have the indebtedness, but we also have the capacity to pay, so we want to pay back. So pit one debt. It might be a conflict that in your life that needs to be resolved, or help that you need to offer to somebody, or an opportunity to connect to Christ to proclaim the gospel. There's many aspects of, of the debt of love that we are owed. Pick one. Confess your fear, reluctance, and lack of love. Pray for the greater love for the person. Pray to be filled with Christ's love for that person. So, the, so if it's a friend that we need to share Christ with, well, we don't just want to share Christ just because we have to share Christ, but because the love that we, that we have for the person now compel us to, to share Christ uh, and, and, and make a commitment to the greatest good for, of that person. If the person is without Christ, or, or, then the greatest good is to have Christ. If we have a conflict uh, with, with a person, then the resolve that in, in the love that we have uh, as the resources. And love, <clears throat> and love resources are already available for us in abundance and, 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 and the scripture tells us to draw upon that, to pay the debt and to be abundant in love. So pick one debt that you have to pay and pray, confess your fear, reluctance and lack of love and, and pray for the commitment for that person. And so now let, let's, let's do that together. Let's uh, love God with a more worshipful heart. Let's pay our debt of love out of the riches of the love of Christ. And while you just group up a person next to you, uh, two or three, and, and just uh, start praying for the worshipful heart, praying for the riches of love of Christ flowing through us, and I'll close.